loss to Georgia Tech, there are now just three teams that remain undefeated. Army, Oregon, and Indiana all look to protect those perfect records come this weekend. While the playoff race starts to tighten up, there are six clinching scenarios in the FBS. Notably, SMU would clinch a spot with a win at Virginia, while Boise State clinches its spot with a win or a UNLV loss. Now, speaking of clinching, fire up those motorcycles, Duck fans. Oregon officially secures its spot in the Big Ten football championship game, and this scenario came after the Big Ten did a comprehensive evaluation of the final two weeks of regular season play and concluded that there would be no condition where they would not finish in first or second place. As for their opponent, though, Indiana can do the same with a win this weekend when they face off against Big Ten rival Ohio State. Now, ESPN Analytics currently gives the Hoosiers a 27% chance to clinch the title game. Both coaches spoke about the excitement and preparation for the game, starting with Coach Signetti. So we put ourselves in a position right now to be talked about quite a bit. That's nice. Uh, it doesn't help us prepare. doesn't help us play any better. But, uh, you know, we've got some great opportunities ahead of us. And this is a team that's capable. And the only limitations uh, on this football team would be those we put on ourselves between our ears. But this is a group of guys that, that do not think that way. And we're going to go in to this next game confident, believing, and we're going to go out there and we're going to play well. Yeah, our guys are fired up for this one. I know that this is this is a must win for us. We've got to go win this game to go play in Indianapolis. And I know the team, you know, the coaches, you know, everybody in this building, the fans know what, what kind of a game this is. And we've got to bring it on Saturday. Now, unfortunately, the Buckeyes have been pretty banged up all year on the offensive line. And now there is another significant injury ahead of this weekend's game. The Columbus Dispatch was first to report that starting center Seth McLaughlin sustained an Achilles injury in practice and is expected to sit out the rest of the season. Now, Ohio State ranks third in rushing yards per game this season. Now, Sam, with this matchup in particular, who has the most pressure on them this weekend? Indiana or Ohio State? Ohio State, absolutely. Yeah, I jumped the gun because I feel like Ohio State right now, there's so much pressure. Ohio State has absolutely so much more pressure than Indiana. And the reason why is not only because they're ranking, but because of the brand and expectation. Everyone expects Ohio State to win this game, at least everyone that's not a Hoosier fan or everyone that maybe doesn't watch so intently and so closely. Indiana is a very well-coached football team, but Ohio State is Ohio State. And so for me, I think the pressure's on Ohio State. They're a big-time favorite. They also already have a loss on the season, a second loss for Ohio State would not be pretty. Now, I do think they would still potentially make the playoff even with another loss, but for me, this is the team with all the talent, all the big-time names on offense, on defense, on special teams, even big-time transfers. For, so for Ohio State to potentially lose this game, I feel like they could feel that pressure. Well, Sam, I, I'll, I'll say this. Um, Indiana's just happy to be there, right? Nothing's been expected of them. They weren't supposed to be in this spot, right? They've played fantastic football. Um, the eye test, I believe, has helped them because of how they've won their football games. So what are they going to do? They're going to go on the road and say, hey, guys, let's just do what we do each and every week. Nobody's expecting us to be here anyway. We're a 13 and a half point underdog. So now that's just more motivation to go out and prove that not only do we belong, but that we are the fifth ranked team in the country. I think the offseason and the moves that were made on this roster for Ohio State has put a tremendous amount of pressure on the Buckeyes because the fan base uh, sees no excuses. And you're worried about trying to get the win versus Michigan, which is what everybody's been talking about. Forget Michigan. you got to figure out how to beat Indiana. I know you got them at home, but I'm with you. The, the, the pressure is on the sideline of the Ohio State Buckeyes. But Lugs, should, uh, should Ohio State be on upset alert? Absolutely, they should be on upset alert. Um, I, I think right now, with Indiana going down there, and you've played the way that you have played, and you've had supreme quarterback play. By the way, there's been only one other player at the quarterback position in college football this year that has been more efficient than Curtis Rourke, and that is Jackson Dart at Ole Miss. That's how good the position has been for, 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 uh, for Indiana, and I think that's going to be the difference, mm -hmm. potentially, in the football game for Indiana to have a chance here. 
Yeah, Luke, I was at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers facility. It's the last, last team I played for in the NFL, and I was sitting there a week or two ago, and I was sitting with Tom Moore, who's a nearly 80-year-old offensive guru. He coached Peyton Manning, coached Andrew Luck. I mean, you name it, right? Was with Tom Brady when they yep. won a Super Bowl. And he was watching the Indiana game, and he said, man, that's an extremely well-coached football team. And I turn on the tape, and I see that Indiana is an extremely well-coached football team. I think what makes Indiana so different is that they play together. Offensive line plays together. You talk about the quarterback play. His his connection with his receivers is at an elite level. And so Ohio State, if they want to win and avoid the upset, they have to not only be more talented than Indiana, but play more as a cohesive unit than Indiana. Yeah, Sam, listen, I mean, if the thing was played on paper, then the talent profile is not comparable, right? It's Ohio State all day long. But when you also consider how the game is played between the white lines, if you look at the three common opponents between Ohio State and Indiana, the point differential of that margin favors Indiana in two of the three games. So we can sit here and say all we want. Well, maybe Indiana's not ready for this. They can't compete. Yeah, they can. Now, it's been my experience when you watch games like this and they're supposed to be a heavily favored team and the team coming in that's the underdog, what generally has to happen is that Indiana's going to have to play one of their best games and then Ohio State's going to have to do something uncharacteristic to their nature to help Indiana. And Indiana has something to prove because they've lost 29 straight games against Ohio State and they last beat the Buckeyes in 1988. So I'm here for the upset. But we're going to move over to the Big 12 and their clinching scenarios. BYU can clinch its title game with a win at Arizona State and lost by either Iowa State or Colorado. Meanwhile, Colorado can clinch its first Big 12 title game in its first season back in the conference with a win at Kansas and losses by Arizona State and Iowa State. So, all right, let's talk Colorado. We got four straight wins and peaking at the right time. So how do they keep their momentum going, Lukes? Well, this may surprise many people to hear this. It's with the defense. Mm -hmm. all right, I've been going around asking everybody for the last couple of weeks, have you ever heard of this guy named Robert Livingston? And nobody has any idea who he is. He's the defensive coordinator of the Colorado Buffaloes, and he has done a remarkable job. Colorado is first in the Big 12 in sacks. Fourth in getting off the field on defense on third down. They have allowed 40 yards less per game against their rush defense from a year ago. They're allowing only 22 points a game. DJ Green has been a force along the defensive front. This is a different football team that has almost a 10-point differential of points per game from 2023 to 2024. So while all the accolades seem to fall towards the offense and to Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter, it's the defense that Colorado has right now that has put them in this position. And they're playing physical. I know this defense, to your point, Lou, they love to play man-to-man -man because of Travis Hunter and how excellent he's been. But up front, on the line of scrimmage, they're playing dominant level of football. And so it's not just Travis Hunter and the DBs. It's the D linemen as well. Yep. Now, on the other side, Sam, Kansas is coming off back-to-back -back ranked wins in consecutive weeks for the first time in program history. They've got a chance to make it three in a row. So what do they need to do to make that happen? They need to stay balanced and stay on schedule. You talked about Colorado being hot, but it's really Kansas. Back-to-back -back wins of ranked wins, but it almost was a third straight win of ranked teams, right? Because the week before, they nearly beat Kansas State in Kansas State's house, right? That was a Sunflower Showdown, big-time rivalry. I called that game, and there was a play at the end of the game, fourth quarter, Jalen Daniels, ball in his hand. They're going down. You think he's going to score, and for whatever reason, he gets caught. I hadn't seen that from Jalen Daniels, but since then, this team woke up, and they've turned around. Last week in their win versus BYU, they were balanced. 30 runs, only 19 pass attempts. So Devin Neal, Jalen Daniels, Luke Grimm on the outside. That's him right there, number 11, Luke Grimm. He's a big-time playmaker for the team. A senior, he's become more effective, more elite as a pass catcher. Jalen Daniels doing both with his arm and with his legs. And so what this Kansas team has become now is what we expected at the beginning of the season, a dynamic offense with big-time weapons at receiver and a dynamic running game. And so that's what we're seeing now and I think that's why it may be on uh, not upset alert per se but Colorado needs to keep their eyes open for all those weapons. They have to keep their eye open just like BYU had to because Kansas had themselves a game last week and popped BYU's undefeated bubble so Lugs, how do you see that loss affecting this BYU team moving forward when they take on Arizona State? Well I think it's going to do one of two things it will either motivate them to press the reset button or it will have taken the wind out of their sails. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's going to be much in between and now nobody had on their bingo card 
at the beginning of the season that BYU would be in the position that they're in and have to go on the road at Arizona State and be in this type of matchup with college football playoff and Big 12 championship implications. I think there's a couple of things to note with BYU. Uh, number one, they cannot play the way they've played offensively in the red zone as of late, particularly last week at home. They had four trips into the red area, zero touchdowns. Actually, was only two for four on those four trips. That's not going to cut it on the road. Secondly, you can't turn the football over. That's not winning BYU football. Turnovers last week. If you're going to go on the road, you have to play clean. That's how this BYU football team has played all year long. They don't beat themselves, stout on defense, make the necessary plays, but when they don't do that, right, then they're not capable of being that team that's got to win on the margins, which is kind of how they've built this program. So I think the red zone efficiency on offense is a huge key against Arizona State this week. Absolutely. And on the other side, you know, Sam, what kind of challenges can Arizona State bring to this one? Man, they got Cam Scadabo coming in like a wrecking ball. I mean, that's what's happening right now. Arizona State has an opportunity not just to crash into the top 25, which they just did, but also crash into the college football playoff. Arizona State has a chance to potentially go to a Big 12 championship led by their running back, who's a dominant running back, a wrecking ball, go to a Big 12 championship, and if they win, there's a chance they would be in the college football playoff. And so I think the challenge is, can you stop the running game of Arizona State? Can you stop Cam Scadaboo? And if you can, then you have a chance. But BYU, they played a lot of close games. Last week, they lost it. The week before, there was a, a crucial call versus Utah they could have lost. So they've been playing on the margins, and Cam Scadaboo might just wreck all those margins. You know what's amazing about this, Sam, is you look at both Colorado and Arizona State going into last year, and you look at the rosters that both coaches inherited, and you look at the product that was on the field for both of these teams. And now Arizona State is sitting here at 8-2 and two with a bunch of no-name kids that nobody's ever heard of, right? A quarterback in Sam Le Levitt that was exiled from Michigan State, he comes over, and this is a, an entirely different program, an entirely different football team. It's been a magical run for Arizona State. That staff deserves a ton of credit because this was literally patchwork of a roster accumulation with Arizona State. Look where they are right now. Well, but just this matchup alone, Luke, because both teams have proven a lot of people wrong. Arizona State was picked last in the Big 12 preseason poll. BYU was picked 13th out of the 16th school. So that's pretty cool to see, just to see how far they've come already. And also, don't forget to vote for which team you think will be the Dr. Pepper One Final Team by using hashtag One Final Team. All right, we're going to take a break. Coming up after the break, Luke is here with us today at 9 a.m. on ESPN. All right, let's take a look at the CFP Top 25 rankings. The top four remain the same with Oregon, Ohio State, Texas, and Penn State. Indiana slides into the top five for the first time this season, while Georgia's win versus Tennessee leapfrogs them ahead to number 10. Then BYU drops eight spots after suffering its first loss of the season to Kansas, while Colorado jumps five spots after its win versus Utah. It's time now for What's Your Beef, presented by Old Trapper. Now, which team or teams should have the biggest beef after last night's rankings reveal loops? Uh, for me, it would be SMU. I, I think SMU has, you know, maybe suffered for a lack of branding a little bit, you know, making the move from the group of five up to the power four. Um, as, as Rhett Lashley stated, you know, during the, the, the reveal show last night, they've won seven games versus power four teams. Four of those have winning records. Their losses by three points to BYU. And they're a little bit like Indiana in the sense that everything they do, they do well. They can run the football. They've got a dynamic quarterback in Kevin Jennings. They have scored on defense. They've scored in the kicking game. And they stopped the run. Those are championship-level traits. And so I think they're just hanging in there. And they know if they keep winning, all right, good things will happen. But I, I would imagine they probably would have expected to be a spot or two ahead of where they are. Well, I have some beef of a team that I would have expected they would have been a spot or two below where they are. That's Missouri. And I got beef with the ranking committee having Missouri still at 23. Last week's rankings, Missouri was 23. Then they went out and they lost the game to South Carolina, 34 to 30. In this week's rankings, there's no penalty or punishment. They're still number 23. And I'm looking, okay, what are their other two losses? They lost to AM 41 to 10. Lost to Alabama, 34 to 0. And so I'm sitting there saying, okay, if Missouri's still 
still in the top 25. I have a little bit of an issue with that because how much does that benefit, I would say, a team like Alabama? Because now a win for Alabama against a top-ranked team looks so much better. So that 34-0 to zero loss and that 41-10 loss and also being ranked 23 last week and to lose and still be ranked the same, for me, uh, doesn't all the way add up. I mean, I think it always is just a toss-up when you take a look at those two. Not everyone's going to be happy, but we're going to get more into that on Champ Drive. But let's shift gears to Lugs' top freshman of the week. So who stood out to you, Lugs? Uh, well, let's go down to the Plains in Auburn, Alabama. Cam Coleman, who was one of our top three wide receivers in last year's class, along with Ryan Williams and Jeremiah Smith, had a breakout performance. Eight catches, 100 yards, three touchdowns. But it was the acrobatic one-handed catch in the end zone that was simply spectacular. I think this was a great day for Cam Coleman and for Hugh Freeze to make sure this young freshman is engaged and knows he's a part of the future. Let's take you out west. Emmett Mosley, the true freshman wide receiver, one of a multitude of true freshmen that Stanford's having to play with, had a monster day. 13 catches, 168 yards, three touchdowns in a huge upset over Louisville. Really impressed with some of the young freshmen. And Emmett Mosley has been slowly brewing throughout the season, although the Cardinal have had a down year. How about you go down to the swamp and you take a look at the return of DJ Lagway, who has made all the difference in the world for this football team in Florida. They are uh, three and one with him as a starter, three and oh, when he finishes the game. And he's not even at full strength yet with his legs. This could be a scary game for Ole Miss on the road coming off of a bye. Florida's got nothing to uh, lose and everything to gain. And they have confidence playing at home. Really impressed with the progress of, of DJ Lagway, no doubt. And then Colin Simmons, we've, we've utilized this guy in this format multiple times. And he doesn't play a ton of snaps, but every time he plays, something good happens. Three total tackles, two sacks, and two of those three tackles are tackles for loss. He's an absolute menace off the edge. And once he starts to gain some weight and gets into the offseason program and become more of an every down player, boy, he is going to be a scary prospect. And then Draylon Miller, who was a top 100 player for us in the ESPN 300 in last year's class, Breakout performance, six receptions, a touchdown versus Utah. One of many compliments for Shador Sanders, Sanders to utilize in the offensive weaponry for Colorado. And Miller, it was his turn this past week. A much-deserved inclusion into our top five top freshmen of the week. I mean, that's a great Yeah, that's list. impressive. It's oh, go ahead, Sam. Yeah, no, no, my bad, my bad, Victoria. I was still impressed by the list. I think a couple things stand out is the fact that uh, Draylon Miller and the arsenal of weapons that Colorado is having, you think about some of the benefits they're having offensively and some of the offensive explosion. It's not just Travis Hunter. It's guys slash Draylon Mil Miller. And then also uh, Colin Simmons, your point. Like, this dude doesn't play a ton. They rotate a lot. But every time he's on the field, you're seeing it's not necessarily like graduate level pass rush moves, but you're seeing his athleticism right. on full display. So imagine when he starts practicing those moves, how elite he'll be. So all those freshmen are outstanding, but those last two stood out a lot to me. Yeah, Colin Simmons is a, is a unique guy, right? I mean, when he starts to figure out what he's doing, just imagine what's going to happen then, to your point, as a pass rusher. Because right now, it's just off of pure skill. Pure skill. And he has been uber impressive every time he takes the field. Another one I was really happy to see out there was DJ Lagway. He's back. And I'm telling you, Florida's a sneaky yeah. good team. And I don't know about you guys, but I think Ole Miss and any team visiting the Swamp needs to watch out. I mean, Sam, are, are you on a little upset alert there? I am. Florida is a team that I think everyone needs to watch out for. Of course, they decided to keep their yeah. coach, but more so, this team is playing inspired. They're playing yeah. um, like they have nothing to lose, playing free. And so yeah. DJ Lagway is leading that charge. And I think any team that plays Florida needs to be on alert. Having nothing to lose but everything to gain is is everything. And I think that is uh, that's something that I think, as you said, Lugs, can really play to your favor. So real quick, Lugs, do you think we should be on upset alert for Ole Miss?